Hello. Um, this is my movie room. Uh, it is January, now January 2nd, um, 2023. Still trying to get used to saying that. Um, you might notice a bunch of new additions. Um, first of all, I have some new posters in. Got those from the Disney Movie Rewards website. Um, there is now a slot machine. Got this for you know, just 50 bucks, uh, you know, just this past summer, which is awesome. Um, and it has a, uh, kind of a, uh, over, you know, it has a LCD screen going on in front of an actual reel, um, you know, slot reels, which are also eliminated. Yeah. And you could also pick the number, uh, pick the reels each if you wanted to, but that's like a Japanese slot machine, uh, themed for Texas Longhorn, which is fun, kind of funny. Um, then I have my F-14 Tomcat pinball machine, which is, you know, no change there. Um, got my new Avatar Wave the Water poster. Um, Disney sent me one that was actually printed kind of funny. Um, the back, uh, illustrations actually don't match up perfectly with the front so it actually gives it almost a 3d effect which i don't think is actually on purpose even though it's a 3d movie um i've already sent them a support ticket hopefully they can refund me my points at the very least um hopefully get a new one though um i missed out on this one on the movie rewards website so i actually bought that via ebay but um you know i love egypt and i love that series so didn't want to miss out on that one i had the other version but not that cool poster um, until now. And this is the new Willow poster. Um, yeah, I really like the series. I don't think I've la finished the last episode or two, but, um, you know, I liked the movie from back in the day. Didn't watch it as a kid, but watched it as an adult, but, you know, I really like it. Um, then I have my NBA Jam, um, countercade in here, um, which is autographed by the guy who says, uh, boom shakalaka and he's on fire. Um, my Miss Pac-Man machine as well. And, uh, actually one of the biggest additions I did was adding in these movie curtains. Um, I did this all by myself. Um, I'll, I'll actually turn on a light here so you can better see it. And this is probably, the, yeah, the biggest addition that I did. Um, you might've noticed from last year, you know, it just kind of looks like a, uh, I don't know, from my opinion, the projector without a curtain looked like a little bit more like class to me. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, it looked great, you know, for a long time. I had a projector screen at my last house for like almost a decade and it was just fine too. But, you know, I just was like, well, what can I do in this room to help it out? And that's what I went with. I don't know if everyone would like it, but I like it. And uh, I'm actually able to um, bring in these two screens. So whenever it's a 4-3 kind of aspect ratio movie, like the like the Justice League Snyder Cut movie, um, I'm able to uh, mask the two sides. It would be perfect if I could mask the bottom two and the top, but um, this is the cheapest, best way I could do it for now until I... I'm hoping that technology actually keeps up with keep, uh, catches up with it, what I'm thinking of, and, um, you know, I don't have to create something from scratch for it, but, uh, in the meantime, um, what I actually have done is I actually bought these, um, these Alexa kind of, um, wheelers, so I could do it from my phone. This is, I actually was wanting to show them working in the video, which I actually, which I will here um you'll you'll get to see but i'm charging them for now because i just haven't used them forever because it's stuck over there um every once in a while i have to fix this that's where the poles are kind of connected and i have tape to help help it keep going um normally i had that fixed but not fixed at the moment.
Here, push that back. Um, just need to push that back. And then I can open it only so far if I want it to be 4-3 from watching laser discs or old movies or the Snyder Cut or whatever. The ones I got actually don't work that perfect with uh, in terms of automation, it's more of a manual approach. I still have to like find the app and click them in, but even then I'm, I'm still able to do it, um, and stop it at a certain point, but it's just not exactly what I envisioned yet. I believe there's a hub version. There's a different brand. This was the cheapest brand I could find. It was like around 70 bucks or, uh, maybe a home a hundred bucks for the pair. But I think the ones that would actually work perfect in terms of what I want to do with automation, like turn on movie room and then it would like open the curtains wide. Um, I, I think I would have to get the uh, $100 for each and then the hub too, which is 30 bucks. I think, and don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that one you can do a lot more with it versus these. The automation, it says it works with Alexa, but really it's talking about um, the light sensor that's located on these uh, curtain uh, pullers. Um, it's more automated with controlling the temperature of the room. And based on the temperature of the room, it will actually open and shut the curtains, which is perfect for um, pretty much every single, most every single customer that they'll have. Um, except for me, which is just trying to use it for a movie room. So it doesn't work for me in that case. I have to manually open and shut it because Alexa doesn't know how to do that. But still, I, I really like how this came out. I, I mean, I really enjoy, say, this is me sitting in the chair. So now it feels a little bit more like a movie theater to me, at least. I know it's not for everybody, and these curtains probably look cheap to a lot of people, but, you know, it's I I like it. You could spend a lot more money and have something way better, but I like it. And uh, another addition I did to this room was, um, I said in my last video, you know, my last room tour uh, in 2022, how I had f uh, six ceiling speakers. So the reason why I had six was because the electrician I had, I already had four speakers because I was supposed to buy a house that didn't have any ceiling speakers. And then I ended up going with this house when it was all set and done. And they already had these middle two speakers. But I already had four speakers purchased. I couldn't return them. It had been too long. And uh, I, the electrician told me, um, hey, you know, it's about the same price to do two of them as it is to do four of them. So I was like, all right, fine, put them in. And I accidentally fell through the ceiling uh, at my old house uh, in the garage <laughs> or partially fell to the ceiling uh, when trying to move boxes. So ever since then, I don't trust myself on uh, walking on studs over a over a, a room. So that's why I hired an electrician. Otherwise, I would have just done it myself in a past life. But now I don't trust myself in terms of my gymnastic abilities in the attic. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I had that's the reason why I had six ceiling speakers installed, even though my receiver, um, this Pioneer... You could only support, uh, um, what, nine channels? Is that nine? Yeah, so I got you know, your regular five, uh, five channels, normal, plus um, four speakers uh, and, a, and a sub. Um, but what I did was I went ahead and I spliced this speaker, this middle speaker, to play the same exact sound as this speaker. So now this one and this one are playing the same sound, and uh, same with those two. And then the back one is actually on a, it, its own channel. That's actually different. So it's basically like, uh, you know, it's it's one of the cheapest, you know, best ways that you could possibly do to to really maximize the, all the speakers I have. You know, maybe in the way future. I mean, I have all the all the cables back here, I can easily switch it and have the full 5.2.6 setup. But this is the best I could do for now because the next step up on receivers that could do something like that would be probably an extra two to $3,000. And that's that receiver was around $300. So, um, but yeah, I, I think it get, still gives a great effect. Um, 
you know, it still sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on up there. You know, the the kind of audio that happens in the ceiling, um, it's hard to even discern what's even go happening anyway. So I think that's perfect for now. Yeah, you can kind of see the little amplifier right there. I have it. And I spliced the two of them um, just because if I were... It actually worked before I even plugged that in. Um, but I just wanted to be safe and make sure it was getting enough power to do that. Um, I plugged it in. Uh, excuse me if I'm brushing over some details. I did it several, several months ago. Um, and then I'm not sure if I showed this last time, but I have an HD DVD player now. <laughs> it likes to work uh, about half the time I try to use it um, based on the HD DVD and also that player. It's a real finicky experience. I pretty much just have it just to say I have it because <laughs> you know, I, I think there's only one or two HD DVD exclusives left. Everything else is made on Blu-ray or 4K or what, what have you. Um, and then up here, I'm not really sure what to do with all this space I have up here just yet. One of my uh, Blu-ray players, my modded 3D Blu-ray player that's region free is downstairs because um, I needed it down there. And then I have my Dreamcast, my record player, steering wheel here. I'm not using it too much, but the um, neighbor kids and, and my son are starting to use it a bit more. They're starting to, you know, enjoy more mature games there. And then now I have a center speaker down here. I still have one in the ceiling behind these curtains however it was too close to these uh atmos speakers right there so the way i can i can uh, discern more of my atmos mix is i bought a um clip or actually this was given to me a clip speaker for my center channel down here um so it's so now you know it's just like a hundred dollar 150 dollar center speaker nothing to write home about but um but yeah, so now I can more more tell how much Atmos stuff is going on in the ceiling, or DTSX. And then uh, over here, um, you know, one of the only things that changed, I added in a little snow village, Christmas village for uh, Christmas time down there. I have my actual one uh, downstairs, but, um, but yeah, this is my nice little village I have for here. Popcorn machine, finally had to buy some new butter and more uh, kernels and bought a lot more toppings um i highly recommend these these are, are pretty pretty delicious you know uh, the, i think the jalapeno one could be better uh the kettle corn one i was actually kind of surprised how good it was the ranch one is actually uh is, it's, it's pretty decent pretty pretty good i don't know but it's take it or leave it on these flavors and then uh clutch city beer i just cleaned that can out and displayed it because my houston rockets are my favorite team and then uh, over here, I have some, you know, some of my uh, movie props that I showed from last time, like little screen news, you know, just a little, uh, trying to get into focus there, awning from episode one, a little piece of production news, Death Star from Return of the Jedi, and uh, some edible grass from the remake of Charlie Jack. This is like $5. Um, and Biggio Bobblehead, and Trevor, I found that at Goodwill recently. <laughs> and then I actually 3D printed these. I have a 3D printer now, and I printed this in two pieces and uh, glued it together. But um, yeah, this is from the Moon Knight uh, uh, show. You can kind of see that character on the right, and, and then uh, there's the other character that was on the left. Um, but yeah, I really like, uh, this is the kind of stuff you can 3D print. This is one of the bigger ones that I've done. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, the gauntlets that are from, uh, the movie First Night and extras used. And a little piece of the Rockets floor and they won championships. But yeah. Um, yeah, and then now I have, you know, my PS5, Series X, and I think I had, might have had those last time. Yeah. Um, oh, and then these bar stools are pretty much temporary. I'll move them downstairs when I make room put up some of the Christmas items and uh yeah I'll have to show this slot machine a lot more in detail got my super 8 millimeter projector here which I need to show a lot more in detail at some point here's some of the HD DVDs I, ref I was referring to I still need to throw that in because I actually I don't have a blu-ray copy of Happy Gilmore so that'd be fun to watch you know I've pretty much memorized that movie um shoot a yeah 
Um, yeah, and uh, let's go ahead and check out the man caves. Also, um, I just breezed over it in my last man uh, movie room video uh, that there is a TV behind here. Let me get to show it. You know, I just mounted the remote control to the projector screen there, but it's actually wireless, but I just put it there to lose it. And uh, one of the main purposes for this is uh, I actually, uh, my projector actually broke um, a, a long, you know, a bunch of months ago, months ago, messaged Amazon and everything and BenQ and nobody, third party seller, everybody acted like they didn't want to fix it. Um, but then Amazon actually ended up coming through and sent me, uh, uh, gave me credit to buy a new one. So, um, let that be a lesson to you. Just get Amazon on the online chat and just beg to them to help you, help you out, you know, try to go over the details and, and they were able to help me out. So anyway, so I used this for like a month or two until I got my new one. Um, but also I just had the connections here and I had this TV needed to put it somewhere and I put it here. Um, especially when I was trying to figure out what kind of projector screen I needed and all that stuff. And, um, but one of the main things I use it for present day is, uh, some of the 3d Blu-rays don't have Dolby Atmos on the mix. Um, but the 2D Blu-rays or 4K discs or the digital version have Dolby Atmos. So I will actually play the 3D version and the 2D version simultaneously. And I'll try to match them up. Like, you know, look at their, you know, I, if I can't press play at the exact same time on both movies, I'll try to match up their lips or whatever, just to make sure they're playing at the same time. So then I'll have the 2D version playing on the TV and I'll, and I'll have the TV version just to uh, see that it's all matched up correctly. And then once it's matched up correctly, I'll drop the projector screen and watch the movie as needed um, in front of it, but using the audio from the TV, if that makes sense. But yeah, um, but it's just a 55 inch TV. So definitely not um, something that I would normally use otherwise, just if I'm having an issue with my projector or I'm trying to watch things simultaneously, or um, if I'm, you know, have friends over in this room, or I have to do some sort of work that needs more light, and the projector isn't made for a light, it's actually kind of a low lumen projector, um, this is a great thing to use if I need the lights on, then I'll just turn on the TV, so, so it's got a few different uses, so I definitely need some TV back there. And this is the game room, or the man cave. Um, changes have happened in here as well. So yeah, new movie poster there. Well, that's the when the original Avatar movie went back in theaters. Um, still got my guitars on the wall. Oh, now I have a banjo. I was, well, it's a six-string banjo. Still need to play that some more. I forgot I need to do some maintenance on it. I forgot what exactly what I need to do. Um, and I have my Dean Cadillac down there. That's my main guitar. Um, yeah, box of laser discs. I need to find a place where I should put those because now, over here, I have moved things around. So, a lot more crap up there now. Um, and uh, over here, yeah, just a ton of stuff up here to go through that. And then over here, um, I got going on my little. So a lot of my, you know, 3D printed crap, like the next cube, and well, that's an that's an ornament right there. Um, Goat boy, I just found him at a antique store a couple days ago, which is I didn't know that existed, but I watched Saturday Night Live back in the day and immediately had to buy it. Um, I got Zoltar over there. I put Stranger Things there just because I didn't know where to put it for now. Flight of the Navigator. I actually met that guy uh, earlier this year. He's a nice guy. Um, then some of these little miniature arcade things. That Atari thing actually has multiple games in it. It's pretty cool. Works on that little TV. My 3D printed Tron recognizers. And um, that's actually a black light activated uh, Metroid, which is kind of fun. And these little TVs are really cool. They'll play like Back to the Future and Batman. And that one plays Friends. The newest one on the left, which is kind of funny. And down here I have my retro arcades. 
So I got my tabletop games. Um, you got Street Fighter. My Neo Geo is actually not plugged in for some reason. Um, Street Fighter, if I had two of these, I could plug them together, which they're pretty cool for that. Um, my Taito Egret 2 Mini, uh, which is pretty sweet because, um, you know, it's all clicky and everything. And the screen actually rotates. So this is a vertical game, so it looks best like this. But for the games that aren't vertical, you could do that. But of course, now it's cut off because it's made to be vertical. So I'll just go ahead and switch it back. That game's Truxton. Truxton. This CGR. Wish he'd bring his channel back, but classic gamer. Then I got my Donkey Kong. Uh, you know, it's all flickery right here, but in real life, it's not flickery at all. And it looks awesome. It's like a cool old calculator screen. Pretty neat. Highly recommend it. Got that for just a couple dollars at a garage sale, just a couple doors down at my old house. It's pretty neat. That one and a Qbert one. And speaking of Qbert, then I have the Warren Davis Qbert uh, uh, version um, down here, which is the with the harder Qbert version and the regular version. Pretty neat. Um, then I got my Missile Command, which is really fun. It's pretty much how fast it goes. You can set the speed too if you wanted. Um, this is actually my newest edition down here, which is Asteroids. I bought this used, you know, just Asteroids by itself. Didn't come with the limited edition box or anything, but, um, I think somebody probably found it at a Goodwill and, and flipped it, but then I was the guy who bought it. <laughs> but I'm glad I ended up getting it, because I think it looks pretty, pretty neat. Um, I think I'm starting to see some scratches through that marquee. Hopefully I don't look at it too much harder, but it's actually... Really fun game. I wish I didn't pass up on it when I saw it to begin with. And then 1942 got this uh, for you know super cheap, like around 75, brand new from Amazon, and you know it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, and I got my change machine there, Eastern Arcade Expo is over here, um, and then I have a Dragon's Lair and a Space Ace and uh, the, the Conversion Cab one. And um, a food fight on order that should arrive, you know, Dragon Lair, Dragon Slayer first, then food fight, and then Space Ace eventually. So that's one reason why I switched up this uh, display cabinets. And then when those start coming in, I'll put some of them up here. Maybe I'll put those up there and I'll put the replicates there. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it just yet. But uh, that's my favorite thing to collect for thus far. And, uh, yeah, those, I tried to buy two more of these, uh, glow-in-the-dark carpet things, but now they don't sell them that, that are, uh, glow with the black lights as well anymore, so I think I just have, I'll just stop it at two there, because I don't make them correct anymore. Then I got my Sony Trinitron. Let me go ahead and, oh, well, actually, I'll show over here first. Um, so then I moved the aliens over here. The big guys were already here. Aliens down here. They were originally up top over here, but now they're down here, which is still cool because they actually get more black light. Um, then I get my little piece fragment of alien egg from Al the movie Aliens, which is pretty, pretty cool, I think. And in the right light, you can really see it reflect. I'll have to show it here in just a minute. Um, and then up here is actually my newest, newest edition, um, new Avatar. Uh, toys. Yeah, you know, once I saw this, you know, the prices were like it was thirty bucks for just this little display here, not including the Mech Warrior guy, but uh, from the movie. But you know, it came with this guy and the and the diorama, thirty bucks. I couldn't pass it up. And it, you can set it to stay on permanently, but I just have it in the try me mode, so I could just click it and then it turns off without wearing out the battery. Um, and then I have the ride on um, Banshee with uh, Jake Sully's wife right there. And um, yeah, and that thing's actually, has little dots that glow with the black light. Um, computer, turn off TV lights. So you can kind of see, yeah, kind of see it there and you can kind of see these glow a bit more. I tried to uh, kind of hold back a bit because they have a whole bunch of cool avatar stuff out right now, but this is, and yeah, like I said, I can keep this on, but it's just normally I don't have to have it on. Um, you know, so I just have the try me button enabled right now, but 
Yeah, I'm trying to uh, restrain myself because you could spend a lot of money on this crap. <laughs> that was enough for me for now. Um, and then uh, let me go ahead and turn on the main lights. And over here, I you know, have my guitars and uh, my computer monitor, um, matte color classic, which fully wor you know works. Um, yeah, it still needs some TLC when you first turn it on, but it fully works. And I got a uh, flash memory in there, which is awesome. And then I got my Mac SC30, which friend Anton helped fix up. So I need to, um, and he actually gave me the motherboard, working motherboard for this one too. Um, so I need to, uh, yeah, I need to turn that on and use it some more. And I got my Vectrix, which is unfortunately hiding there, but I need to pull it out more and use it along with those two Macs. Um, my virtual pinball machine, which needs a lot more work. Um, you know, you can fully play it now, but it's just the, uh, graphic user interface on it just sucks horribly. So... That's been a working project for a number of years now, even way before Arcade 1UP decided to make virtual pinball. If I knew that was a thing, I would have just went with them, but um, but yeah, so I made this because I didn't know that was ever going to happen. Got some new monitors. I got that big old monitor there. And uh, actually, I got a new monitor from a new gig I got, but I just don't know what to do with it yet. <laughs> I might just put it back in the box. I don't know. They... I, I was going to tell them I don't need it, but they just sent it to me anyway, uh, which, you know, uh, first world problem, so too many computer monitors. Um, then I uh, got my um, regular PC there. I need to get a new video card for it at some point, but damn, even though the crypto brought the prices way down, it's still the cheapness in me just cannot think about spending $700 on a video card to play computer games right now. Then I got my uh, butt kicker thing underneath this chair, so when you're firing a pistol or something, the chair moves, and I got the same functionality in the movie room with the bass shakers I installed. I'll have to make another video on that. Um, more exclusive video. And then I have the Steam Deck, which is actually amazing. I didn't think I'd end up getting one of these, but, you know, I just had money, and then I couldn't help myself at the time, and... Uh, yeah, it was, a uh, it's an awesome deal. I really love that. And it's, uh, does Dreamcast emulation perfectly. Um, unfortunately my fan's not plugged in. I need to plug that guy back in because his lights, or eyes light up. Got some new 3D movies there. Astros World Series. I got the new World Series one on Blu-ray too, but it's not physically here. It's up, I think it's downstairs. And then I added some more 3D Blu-rays to my collection as well. And I, yeah, every time I add more 3D Blu-rays, I actually slowly push my 4Ks out, which I still use my 4Ks, but I have so many 3D Blu-rays, like, well, I'm not going to go the opposite direction, and I like 3D movies more, so I got a lot of them down here, um, <laughs> so I'm not sure what to do yet. <laughs> I have to think about how I'm going to be displaying movies. I have a ton of video games, too, but I'm not displaying them, and VHS had a ton of those. Um, oh yeah, so I actually lit up my Borg Cube. That's just like the old Playmates Borg Cube from back in the day, but I bought some green LEDs, put a battery LED in it. It was really, really easy to wire that in because um, that stuff just clips in on the over the top of it. And uh, now it looks perfect in my opinion. It's like a $10 mod. <laughs> um, Lego TIE Fighter, which is a gift, which is awesome. And... Uh, my controllers there, Steam controller, if anybody remembers that. And this is a new addition. I bought this poster over a year ago, always with the intention of building this light box for it, and then I never got around to building it. Um, but then I saw that um, they did sell this frame in the same way that I make the light box frame. So instead of worrying about how to make the outside frame for it with the plexiglass, um, I just went ahead and went the easy way and made it the same way I made my other light boxes like this one over here and went ahead and just uh got it got it set up pretty quickly and uh yeah I sold a lot of those movie posters and when I was building one of them I did this one at the same time to make it go really quick so I'm really glad I had this um and it's pretty cool because I 
named my Alexa computer in this room, so I can say, computer, turn off Enterprise. Computer, turn off Enterprise. Computer, turn on Enterprise. So, kind of makes me feel like I'm on Starship. I'm, I'm, I'm such a freaking nerd, I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, I got my Mac C over here, my other Mac C. I have another one, too, that I'm not showing. And uh, my Quest 2... Um, I have some of the newer minis, uh, like the Genesis 2, which is pretty cool. Can't help myself with those things. Um, and uh, this is actually a new edition. Um, I got the Intech Gaming uh, Arcade Panel. I never thought I was going to get this because, you know, it doesn't work. It kind of squishes the screen because it's a 5x4 monitor, but it, it could either do 4.3 or 16x9. I was going to do 16.9 aspect ratio, but it, I think it just looks better with it fully using all the screen. And honestly, I, I'm going to be just playing real quick play sessions on here, and I'd rather just, just take up the whole screen. But anyway, um, yeah, I have the, because uh, I have the adapters, um, I'm able to plug in more than just the Nintendo Switch, but you can do that. Uh, I plugged in the uh, SNES Mini, and it's all modded, and I have it all, uh, you know, all the games I want on here. Did that a long time ago. Back in the day, I think I even charged somebody 20 bucks one time to do it for theirs, just basically just for my time, and I delivered it to them. But, um, but yeah, so I got all the games on here that I want, and NES Classic, I had that modded too, and then the Genesis 2 Mini. I'm hoping people come out with a Hack G mod for it or whatever, so I can get that modded and get all the Sega CD, Genesis, Mega Everdrive. I have a Raspberry Pi 4 as well underneath this, and there's my other X Arcade board that goes in here. But um, the Retro Pi, like I make one. The thing with the stupid thing with the Retro Pies and Retro Arc on the Retro Pies is you make one change and then it like breaks like the whole freaking thing. Or like I'm I'm just like obsessed with trying to get every game to run perfectly. Like, I had this trackball that's underneath the PSVR. I deleted the controller files on it stupidly one time because I upgraded the PCV on it, and now they, I can never get that trackball working again. So, uh, yeah, so it's, this is just kind of just fun. Just like, all right, real quick, plug in the mini. Can't affect any of the buttons. It just works. You know, you have to sync it up. You know, you hold the sync button. Every time you switch from, like, a, a different mini system, you have to resync it change the dip switches on these two adapters and then you're good to go i mean it's just like there's nothing to really screw up um versus you know on the raspberry pies and retro pie software there's i screwed up all the time and it's just a constant project so anyway um then i have this still you know, with my modded uh you know uh glenn retro whatever thunder sticks to use i don't know what he calls his company but anyway so i got his uh uh, spinner and trackball in there, which is fun, and Star Wars Arcade, still glad to have that one. I don't play these two as often as I possibly should, I mean, I play them every once in a while, but um, this thing I've been playing a hell of a lot of uh, ever since I put it in, and they gave us multiple overlays to choose, but all the overlays are pretty much crap except for the Mortal Kombat one I noticed. Um, I might buy a new over overlay for it at some point, maybe a new marquee, I don't know. But yeah, that is the man cave. Oh, and I'll show up here. Got my new Astros championship hat to go with the other one. Um, keep on hating haters. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, uh, uh, yeah, computer, turn on TV lights. Yeah, turn that back on. Um, yeah, some of the Power Ranger toys up there. I was letting my kids use this, but then they kept breaking it, so I was just like, I'll just put it up there for now. Um, autograph Steve Wozniak uh, mouse which you know anybody can buy it off his website but still cool to get it how I recommend getting it while he's still still doing that um yeah and King Kong and everything and oh yeah this lights up too but I don't think, think I have that turned on just yet yep yeah there you go I always never know where to put this thing but put it there I'm glad I have it and uh yeah oh yeah Autograph thumb poster, um, comic, um, but yeah, this is it, um, thank you so much for watching my new game room, man cave, movie room tour in 2023, hope you all have a great year, 
and I will see you back next year for another one of these with more updates, and I'll try to make a lot more videos this year for sure, although um, I added a new child to my life and a uh, new job and everything, so I probably have my hand full, hands full for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, I will still try to make more videos. And thank you so much for watching. And good night. Appreciate it.